Okay, YouTubers, this is Joe from Art Alien TV. Now today we're going to be looking at the rover. Specifically, I'm going to show you some other images as well, but I'm going to specifically be showing you images today of the rover wheels because the latest set of images from the Curiosity rover that came out, they were put up on the site literally last night, I think, are causing a bit of disturbance out there because <laughs> basically what we have is some pretty bad damage to the wheels here. And this is one of them. Uh, now, these have been get, getting progressively worse over the years. And what I've got here, I've got some different folders and different images showing you different stages of degradation of the rover wheels. Now, the rover wheels specifically, that are the ones that are the most damaged, are the middle ones for some reason. Now, this was taken, this image here was taken over a year ago. And uh, this is from my Gigapan I did called Battlefield Mars and it shows all the different wreckage in the area. Uh, some of these were found by me and some of these things were found by other people. We've got things like missiles and tanks and uh, cannons, that kind of thing. Now, the reason why I think these wheels are getting so badly damaged, and here's one of them, uh, is because of the metallic wreckage on the ground, not just rocks. Now, when, as you can see here on the ground, when the rover drives over these rocks, a lot of them just break up because they're not particularly hard rocks. A lot of this is mudstone or basically hardened sedimentary clays. In other words, as soon as you put any real weight on these, they just split like we have here. Now this is completely normal, right? And the whole area is covered in this type of rock. But in between some of this type of rock, there are things like this up on the, on the ridge here. I put some images up here. Now, on the ground, in some of the areas, we have things sticking out of the rocks like this. Now, this one looks a bit like a rifle, but it's not, I don't think. What I think this is, is a metal bar or some reinforced metal object. And this here is not just mudstone here. This is actually concrete. As I've demonstrated before, a lot of the rocks in Gale Crater are just mudstone or sedimentary hardened clays. But in between that, we have ruined and buried buildings, which some of which were made from reinforced concrete, and we have metal sticking out of this concrete. And I think that is the culprit. Uh, because when you look at this, the state of these wheels, now, uh, this, as I said, this is taken uh, just over a year ago, this set of images, and I, I made this gigapan. And uh, you've got the, the cannon type thing up on the, on the ridge line here, right back in the distance here. Just here, I'll show you that now, just there. Something that resembles a cannon, it may not be, but it certainly does resemble one, and there are others that have been found in the area. Guns and cannons, that kind of thing. As well as tanks and, and um, vehicles, and uh, eroded machine guns like this one, okay? This is a machine gun, or something very similar, okay? And there's another one up here. So you can check that out. Links will be below to all these things, by the way. But basically today, we're gonna to be looking at the wheels now. So this was taken about a year ago, just over a year ago, I think, the set of images. And already by then, uh, the middle left wheel of the rover, this is the front of the rover here. You can see the mass cam here. That's the one that takes the main images. And they use the Mali cam, which is the Mars hand lens imager to take these selfies with, because it's on, a, on a, a robotic arm, which is a bit like a selfie stick in a way. So it can take photographs of itself and the surrounding area, okay? And uh, this is the middle left wheel. And this is the one that's the worst damage. Now, this was over a year ago, approximately, and it was already pretty bad, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show, I've got a couple of folders up here. I'm gonna show you um, a set of images from 732, okay? Uh, sorry, 2732. This was also about a year ago, okay? Just under a year ago, I think. Um, I'm gonna flick through these. Now, you've got different pictures here of the different wheels, okay, as they turn. So you can see around the wheel. So you've got a few pictures of each one. So that one looks okay. I think that's the right back wheel. Then we got this one, doesn't look too bad. Then we got this one here, not too bad. Starting to look a, a bit dodgy there. And then when it, as it turns round to this one, oh my God. 
Uh, that's a clip I took of it. This is an enhanced clip. I brightened it up. That, that's pretty bad. Now, this is a year ago, okay? There's the whole image there. You can see that this one's in pretty bad shape already. And it, it shows how thin this material is. This is a sort of composite material here. And we've got these metal parts here. And what looks like carbon fiber uh, sort of composite material here. Um, so we've got metal parts inside, which I think are made of light alloys. And then we've got the outer part of the wheel, which is, this is, which is all kind of crushed in and, and punched through. Now, this is the sort of damage that you would get on a, on a wheel like this, not from just riding over fairly soft sedimentary rocks like we have in Gale Crater, predominantly. Uh, this is from riding over pointed, hard objects. In other words, possible metal wreckage, okay? And that's what, something I've been saying for years now, that there, there is metal wreckage on the ground and sometimes it sticks up out of the rock. We've got these pokey, sharp shards of metal and, and all sorts of stuff sticking out of the ground in some areas, which I've shown. And the rover's driving straight over these things and it's punching holes through the wheels, okay? So you can see here, this was taken, as I said, these were taken about a year ago and it's already pretty bad, uh, but they're holding up and it's mainly the middle wheels for some reason either side that are the worst okay this one's okay almost undamaged so some of them are absolutely in remarkable condition considering how long the road has been there which is nearly nine years now uh yeah it would be it'd be nine years in in the autumn uh, late summer autumn this year so it's been there a long time and it's done remarkably well and i really do hope the rover goes on much much longer it will, I'm hoping, go for another five or even ten years. And it can run on three or four wheels, uh, which is lucky, because one or two of them were almost completely defunct, I would say, uh, especially the middle left one. Now, so that set of images was from about a year ago. Now I'm going to show you another set, which are much more recent. And uh, I've got another folder here of the most recent ones. Now this is where it gets pretty bad. Now I'm going to start here. Uh, I think this is one of the back wheels. This one looks in remarkable condition. And as you turn it round, almost no damage whatsoever at all. Uh, there's, a, there's a few cracks in it, but it, it's in very good shape. And then we have this one. This is the middle left wheel. This is the one which is failing catastrophically, I would say. And as you turn it round, you can see the, the, the damage all the way round. Now, this has always been the worst one, and it's just got worse and worse. But of course, if this does fail eventually in a year or two, it may go on for another year before it completely shreds. Um, it doesn't really matter because the, the rover has six wheels. Uh, this is why they chose that design, but I really do wonder why they chose such thin composite material here, or metal composite material. I mean, look at it. It's very thin. And uh, how did they think that was gonna, gonna last? And if you look at the new Rover, uh, the Perseverance Rover, they've gone back to a previous wheel design, which is more like the Rover wheels on the Opportunity Rover, which look a bit stronger. And uh, I think these, these angled um, parts here, with angled sort of grip, parts to the wheel here are part of the design fault. If you look here, they've split along these these lines here. Whereas if they had um, wheels like we got on the Opportunity Rover, which I'll show you in a minute, um, these are straighter and I think more rigid and a bit thicker as well. So I actually think it's a design error. And you can actually see how it's torn and punched through. Absolutely ridiculous, really, how bad that is. It shouldn't be. Uh, it really shouldn't. They should have known better, really. Uh, but, of course, they're experimenting with lighter and, and, and different composite materials, and the weight is an issue, even though on Mars there's a lot less gravity and uh, there are six wheels to spread the load. Um, the point is they underestimated the fact that there are lots and lots on the ground of sharp objects, metallic objects, sticking out of concrete 
which is construction material, not natural sedimentary clay or rock, okay? So that's why it's in such a poor shape because they didn't realize that basically the, uh, the material on the ground is a lot tougher than they thought. Uh, they, that's an oversight in my opinion. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that the rover will carry on for many more years and I'm sure it will, uh, God willing. I'm, I'm pretty sure it will, but this is pretty bad. Um, it's the worst obviously I've seen and this one here is actually quite scary to look at. I mean, look at that. That is pretty bad. And, and luckily for us, the thing has six wheels and not just four. And uh, it should carry on for another, uh, at least a few years, I would hope, five or ten even, um, hopefully. But they're going to have to go a bit steady with it. And it's interesting how the middle wheel is the one that's taken the most damage. Now, if you look at these selfies here, if you look at the front wheel here, now this is stretched out, obviously, because this was taken at a funny angle, so the, the bottom part of the image is stretched. You can see some damage in the front wheel, but you'd expect that the front wheels would take more damage than the middle, but maybe it's because of the, the way the suspension system works on here. Uh, when they go over something, it, when they're going over, a, say, say um, a, a, a large pile of rocks or something like that, or, or, um, or over difficult terrain, the middle wheel takes the most weight as they go over it. This wheel will go up and be pushed up and then the front wheel will probably go down over the th object first and then the wheel, this will get pushed up in the air and then the, the back wheel will follow it, if you, if you, if you catch what I'm saying. So I, I actually think that the middle wheels were always going to get a lot more wear and tear um, purely because of the six wheel design. I think that's just the way that as it goes over things, the middle wheel gets pushed up in the air and the weight distribution shifts as it goes over the objects on the ground putting more stress on the middle wheels. And um, of course, if they had eight wheels, it would be better, but not necessarily, I don't know. They chose the six wheel design and it obviously works. Uh, the weight distribution is the issue here. And I think they were a bit over optimistic about this rather thin material they've made the wheels from. You can see even, even in this one from a year ago, you can see it's in pretty bad shape. So that was it really, I mean, basically, uh, what we've got here is some pretty bad damage and I've got some different sets of images here which I'll link to all this stuff in the description below. Uh, this is the that's older set of images. This is from Sol 7, uh, 2732. So this is uh, from last year, early last year, almost a year ago, not quite. Um, the damage was already pretty bad there and then we have the, the more recent set of images which is this set here, Sol 3005. This is the, the latest set of images from Mars uh, where we have the ca almost catastrophic damage. You can see on the ground that most of this is just soft sedimentary rock and when the rover drives over it, it just kind of splits and breaks up. Uh, this is fairly soft stuff. You could pick some of this up and probably break it with your hands. It's not very dense material, this sedimentary clay. And um, there's a piece of it here. You could probably break that quite easily with your bare hands. Uh, it's mud rock, basically. Um, but then we do have these things up on these ridges, which sometimes the rover will drive over. Not the higher ridges like this one, but there are smaller ridges all over the place as well. And often there are things sticking up, which I do think are, are either weaponry like we have here, or reinforced metal metal reinforced concrete like we have in this image here and these things sticking out and uh, I do think a lot of this is basically wreckage from the ancient civilization that was here and we've even got down what look like down aircraft and, and missile type objects here and things like tanks and weaponry so if you're new to this channel you really need to go back and look at th through some of my videos and, and you will see that there are dozens or I would say hundreds of, of objects that have been found, hundreds and hundreds of objects that have been found on the ground which are not just made of soft rock. Some of these are metallic objects, even weapons and things like that. And there are 
hard pieces of reinforced concrete with metal sticking out from the ground, which I think may have caused some of the, some of the damage on these wheels. And that is why they're in such a bad shape. There's also this Gigapan here, which shows the Rover in some really nice detail here. This is PIA 24173. Uh, this is basically one that NASA did. I just brightened it up a bit. It was a bit dark. Uh, I've uploaded it to my Gigapan page here. And um, this is a lovely one. This has got great detail. When you zoom in, it's got really sharp detail. The, the, the Mali cam, I think, is, is the best camera on the Rover. And you get some really good detail. Much better than the mask cam, I think. Uh, but you can still see here, this isn't the worst part of the wheel. This is that left middle again. Uh, but this is the bit that isn't the worst bit. If The other side of the wheel, if you turn this wheel around, is the bit that has got the huge hole in it. But how long will this last? Another year, this wheel? I think, I think it's probably got about... A, it, at most another year in it, maybe a year and a half. Luckily for us, the front and back wheels predominantly are in pretty good shape. They are cracked, they got holes in, but from what I can tell, it's in pretty good shape. And uh, the Rover could go on for another five or 10 years, and I really hope it does. Uh, and it will be a, a record-breaking uh, Rover if it does, because if it's anything like Opportunity, and this is a lot more advanced than the Opportunity Rover, if it's anything like that, this thing will still be there, slowly moving around in five or even ten years' time. And I really hope it's even longer. I hope it just goes on forever. But of course, um, there's probably it probably have computer problems again. It's had a, a few shutdowns over the years, uh, but it's already been there a long time. It's been there getting on for nine years already. Uh, so it's done remarkably well. So let's hope it goes on forever. Uh, in, in my books, this is a, a, a class piece of machinery. And you can see how dirty it is. So these, those uh, people that say, oh, there's someone c going up to the rover cleaning it, it's, it's complete garbage. Look at it. It's absolutely covered in dust and sand. So it hasn't been cleaned at all. Uh, that's garbage, okay? There's this new Gigapan I did the other day. Uh, this is a, rec a recent set of images from Sol 2951 and, uh, from last year. And um, there's some weird things in here. And a lot of it just looks like random rocks that are just interesting shapes, uh, which look a bit like statues. Like this little one. This one looks a bit like a figurine here with a head and a body with some kind of weird details around it. Maybe, maybe not. It's, it could just be a rock. Uh, that one, they're not really clear enough. And we have this thing here. Now, I don't know what this is, but it looks like a box or some kind of object here sticking up with a very straight edge to it. And we've got re rectangular symmetry to it here. That was weird. Now, that may be nothing. And unfortunately, this image is in black and white, so we can't really tell a lot about it, uh, apart from the shape. Uh, but this is typical of what you would see in the area. And there are lots of weird things sticking up and, and jagged rocks sticking up. And when the rover drives over these things, sometimes they punch through the wheels and, and the wheels really aren't thick enough. Now, up here, I've got an image of the Percy rover or the Perseverance rover, but Percy for short. And uh, you can actually see it's very similar to the Curiosity rover in design. It's got the same basic design, but it's got different instruments. I will be doing a full video on this soon. But if you look at the wheels, on the Percy Rover, they reverted pretty much back to the Opportunity Rover style of wheels with these almost straight ridges going across, which are closer together, giving it more rigidity, okay? And um, these look better. In my opinion, I think these are better. I, it looks to me that, that these are the business, the, the bee's knees. We've got these closer um, ridges going across the wheel, which basically gives it more tensile strength and if they do go over any sharp objects uh, they're less likely to punch through because the ridges are closer together whereas if you look at the, the Curiosity rover wheels here you can see that these ridges here not only are, are they in a diagonal pattern to give it grip which is cool in a way but because of the, the spacing of these ridges here on the wheels 
they're too far apart. And then what they've done is they've, they've opened it up to, to being punctured and poked through a lot more easy. Whereas if they, they were closer together, there'd be more rigidity there. I understand there are weight issues, of course, but and I'm not having a go at the designers here. I'm just saying, thank God you reverted to the other design. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> because this design, to me, I, I always thought was a bit dodgy. And, and um, uh, this is proof in the pudding of, of what I've, I've been saying for years about it, that these are too far apart. And uh, these, the wheels open to more damage and being punched through by metallic, sharp objects that are being run over, especially by the middle wheel as, these, as it goes over things, the middle wheel gets pushed up and uh, gets all the, all the weight distribution onto it as it travels over piles of rocks and things on the ground. So there we are. That was it, really. I've got, I mean, I've got loads of images up here. And uh, that, that new Gigapan, Sol 2951, by the way, if you look over to the left of it, there's some weird stuff here as well. You're going to need the magnifier, hover zoom magnifier. You've got this rather strange object here with something in the middle of it there. I don't know what that is, no idea, but I thought it was interesting anyway. We have stuff up on these ridges and sometimes poking out of the ground, which is basically wreckage. And uh, these metallic pieces of wreckage and reinforced concrete parts are sticking out of the ground and punching through the rover wheels. and. Uh, Maybe they will have the similar problems when they land the new rover, Perseverance rover, in Jezero crater. Maybe there will be wreckage there as well. I fully expect there will be. And uh, it, may, it may not be as dense and, and as regular as in Gale crater, but it could be. Uh, and I fully expect that we'll find a lot more artifacts in Jezero crater when this lands, including many, many fossils and possible uh, building wreckage and, and ship wreckage, fossils, marine fossils especially, maybe plant fossils even. There could be all sorts down there in, in Jezero Crater. It's similar in some ways to Gale because it's a dried out lake bed. So we will still see similar things. These should last longer with these closer ridges and tougher design. And uh, this looks great actually. I mean, they really do look cool. So. Fingers crossed, let's hope it lands safely. I will be doing updates on the Percy rover as it lands and I'll be covering all of that, so keep your eyes peeled. That will be coming up in a month's time, it's not long now, so things are getting hot on Mars. We've got other countries going up there as well. Check out all the links below, check out some of these gigapans. And uh, if, you haven't, if you're new to this channel and you haven't seen some of my videos, I do suggest you go back and watch a few of them at least. Uh, you will be astonished and one of the ones to watch really is the top Mars finds of 2020 that shows all my favorite finds from last year most of them are mine not all of them uh, there's insects there's fossils there's caves dwellings there's uh, there's wreckage there's weaponry there's dead animals uh, or remains of uh, fossilized remains of animals and petrified remains of animals all over the place like skulls and things like that and remains, including humans and humanoids, okay? When I say human, I say that a loose, with a, loosely, okay? So do check that out. There's loads of stuff in there. And uh, there are things like plants, buildings, statues, and even mummified remains of people. And some of these things are enormous, okay? Absolutely enormous. And some of them are very small. So check it out. So thanks for watching, everybody. That was it for today. So keep your eyes peeled. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.